the back where it belongs. One, two, three, or an I give up in the middle of the ring and leave the blood where it belongs, flowing in every person's veins. Disqualification, and I'm sure they both should have been at some point. This probably should be stopped because of the loss of blood. <laughs> Professional wrestling, long enjoyed by fans the world over as a sport where active audience participation is a must. Wrestling fans, unlike fans of any other professional sport, get the chance to interact and perhaps on a rare occasion influence the outcome of the match. In major cities throughout the United States and the world, filling major stadiums and arenas, professional wrestling continues to draw huge and exuberant crowds. Wrestlers arriving in arenas in huge cars, attending gala parties and premieres, continue the myth that professional wrestling is a glamorous and exciting life. But professional wrestling has a secret, a dark, dirty secret. Modern day professional wrestling, once referred to as the sport of kings, is forcing great athletes to become animals. Man, for all intents and purposes, is an animal, but a highly refined, civilized animal. What causes certain men, when locked in confrontation, to behave like an enraged beast? To some wrestlers, a pin is not enough. The opponent must look like raw meat, chewed and mauled before victory will be complete. Should these wrestlers be barred? Should they be caged like animals? Only you can answer those questions. Come with me now as we observe some of the animals of the squared circle. Nothing is more frightening than the feeling of helplessness. Imagine yourself after completing a long and hard period of training to become a wrestler, facing an opponent who wants nothing more than to savage another human. Wrestler Jeff Ripley knows that feeling. After the match was complete, Ripley's opponent continued to beat him with a chair. Gripley lay helpless in front of the stadium filled with people. Soon paramedics came to his aid and Gripley was placed on a stretcher and removed to a local hospital for further treatment. Confused and dazed, Gripley drifted in and out of consciousness until he blacked out. He was never able to see the horrified faces in the stands. Happily, Gripley has recovered and is back in the world of wrestling and doing well. Another man, Ricky Bauer, is also one of the lucky who was mauled by a beast and lived to tell about it. After being slammed on a cement floor, Bauer was smashed with a set of steel steps. The result, Bauer being carried back to the dressing room unconscious. Bauer is also wrestling again without any permanent injuries. The same is not true, however, for all wrestlers. J.D. McSlade, a wrestler who was enjoying a promising rookie year, was slammed on the concrete floor, opening up a huge gash on the back of his head. As McSlade lay on the floor and a pool of blood collected beneath him, his opponent continued to beat him with a chair. McSlade was beaten senseless. Medical personnel at ringside were afraid to move the prone body of McSlade. Not only did the chair do damage to the body, but the blows to the head caused a severe loss of blood. McSlade was removed to the dressing room, where he was attended to by medical personnel. Paramedics. Come on, where, is the paramedics coming? Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe this. You got any pillow? You got anything? Oh, man. Somebody, somebody here help us move him flat? future of J.D. McSlade is unknown. One of the most violent men in modern-day professional wrestling is DC Mad Dog Drake. 
Once a clean-cut fan favorite, Drake opted to cut a niche in wrestling by leaving a trail of blood behind him. Drake, however, did not accomplish this on his own. At his side was a manager by the name of Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob, a man who has never been accused of being sane, is often seen at ringside wearing outrageous outfits. It was Bob who, on a television talk show, spat water into the face of announcer Ron Barry. It was also Bob who masterminded the turnaround of Drake and arranged for a series of matches between DC Drake and former tag team partner and close friend Eddie Beach Boy Miranda. In their first meeting, Drake proved they were friends no more. And now Dick Whirly is said, Oh, and Eddie is cut on the floor. Eddie is cut. Oh! Did you hear that, Bob? I saw it. Oh! Miranda is bleeding profusely. You call this a wrestling match? Well, that ought to do it. This is really disgusting. Really disgusting. And Drake is pulling Miranda back in the ring and punching him right in that cut. Oh, Dick really has got to stop this. He's got to stop this. In another meeting, Bob was observed passing an object to Drake. A great camera shot revealed a pair of brass knuckles. Although for most of the match, Drake held the upper hand, a mistake gave Miranda his chance, and he made the most of it. However, a new figure appeared this night in the career of D.C. Drake. Damian Kane is slowly doing a... Wait a minute, uh, D.C. is busted open now. And Eddie still, I think... Notice you're dealing with a brutal animal in that ring right now. Eddie Miranda is a total psychotic killer right now. Look at the, look at the fire well inside. As well he should be. There's no room. He's got the there sleeper. Is, no, he He's doesn't have the sleeper, sleeper on DC no, Drake. No, he does not have the sleeper He's got the sleeper on DC Drake. Uncle no. Bob is coming in the ring. Here comes Uncle Bob. And Eddie gets Uncle Bob. Down goes Bob. DC is just about out. And now, Eddie has the sleeper on Uncle Bob. Well, Uncle Bob is gone. Uncle Bob is gone. He is out. And now he's back to DC. DC yeah, hits Mike, Mike Midman. Mike might be gone. Mike Midman is, is out of it. DC, Eddie Miranda has cleaned house. Well, Eddie just Eddie uh, Miranda has won the match house. himself. He's trying, he's, Eddie is going over to Mike Midman now. Oh, no. Here's Damien Kane. Oh, here comes Damien. Damien. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Damien Kane got Eddie Miranda from the top row. What is he doing? What is he doing? Well, he's going to oh try and get God. DC on him and get a fall. Oh, no. Hey, Damien Kane has put DC Drake on top of Eddie Miranda after Pearl harboring him. And now what? Oh, is three. Oh, no. What and a travesty. Damien Kane. No one really knows where Damien was from, and Damien was not telling. Kane claims he was a man of the world. Kane talked Drake into firing Uncle Bob, and at this point, the career of DC Drake was in the hands of Damien Kane. At wrestling events, DC Drake now had a different look. Being led to the ring on chains and his eyes blackened, Kane now claimed that he had found the secret to ridding man of all his civilized ways and was able to transform Drake into an animal. Drake, who was dangerous before, now appeared to be crazed. Opponents stared in disbelief as Drake stood in the opposite corner drooling and foaming from the mouth. Drake. Then a Godfather is all he can uh, to hold him back. 
unbelievable. Look at the size of the chains wrapped around his neck. They need it. Oh. He's been a good mad dog. He's been a good boy. Would you like a little no. bit? Would you like a little bit no. of me, bro? Take a little bit. No, 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 not too much. Not too much. Not too much. Let off it. Let off it. We got to save some for later. We got to save some for later. The man is so razzled and dazzled. The man is so good at what he does. I got to give him a treat once in a while. And when you're dealing with a mad dog, you got to give him a little bit of roadkill once in a while. You understand what I'm saying? We found this dog laying on the side of the road we slice his throat we hang him upside down we let the blood drain out of him and then we give it to the mad dog take another piece brother give me a little bit of that and you're talking about when you're talking about the world champion you're talking about man that's class when you're talking about a world champion you're talking about nothing father than the best in the business and when you're talking about a mad dog when he wins the title for you you gotta treat him to take another bite Take another bite. Eat it all. Eat it all. One of the first challenges to the team came from former friends Larry Winners and Eddie Miranda after a battle royal victory. The team of Drake and Kane claimed that they wanted to congratulate the victors. About doing a fine job and winning the battle royal as top professional athletes that they are. Damien claiming that he came out here to I congratulate the Beach Boys on their victory. Whoa. Just whoa, just whoa, 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 whoa. Mad Dog, these two maggots want to match with us. I don't know what brought it on, but they want to match with us. What do you think? Shut up! Intelligent match. words from the they one and only DC right Mad Dog Drake. We came here to wrestle, not to talk. You want to accept this challenge? Nick Worley in the ring now trying to get things under control. I didn't come here for no match. I didn't come here for no match. Simply because, simply because that's your job. That was your job. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh! Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. One of the Beach Boys just tapped Damien. Oh my God, DC attacked the one with his chain. Damien has the other Beach Boy. Oh, heck is broken loose here. One Beach Boy is out of the ring. Damien has the other one, and he's down. Mad Dog Drake is standing in the middle of the ring. Oh, Bedlam has broken loose, ladies and gentlemen. The other Beach Boy is outside of the ring. Shows no signs of getting up. Damien still continues to attack the second Beach Boy in the ring at the time. Mad Dog Drake is now getting in his licks. I can't believe this. First of all, telling everybody that they did not want to wrestle. And now attacking them. Oh, a little help! Here comes Chief Jules Strongbow! Chief Jules Strongbow has just come into the ring. Although Miranda's chest was ripped open by Kane's studded collar, Chief Jewel Strongbow prevented any permanent damage from occurring. Seeing enough of Drake and Kane's rampage, Strongbow made this challenge. Looks to me that he does not want to be bothered. in this building is nicking you tonight. They've had enough. If you've got any guts. Chief Jewel Strongbow, ready for action in the middle of the if ring. If you've got any guts, put the belt on the line in a strap match, dude. And so the strap match was set. On the evening of the match, Strongbow was able to get the NWF to agree that Drake's manager was to be handcuffed to the ring post to prevent interference. With Kane handcuffed, the match began. It was DC Drake who drew first blood in the match. It did not take Strongbow long to strike back. With both men bloodied and weak, it appeared that Strongbow was beginning to control the match. There could be a new champion. 
It soon appeared that Strongbow would become the new NWF champion. But like so many times before, Kane was able to find a way to keep Drake the champion. Three corners! This can't be happening! One this more! Can't be happening. And Chief Joel Strongbow is the new National Bro, Wrestling Federation the champion, champion until he gets there. The bottom Wait, rope is out. 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 A return match was set between the men. This time it was a dog collar match. Before the match, Strongbow did a silent war dance in the locker room area, asking the gods to give him the strength to win. At the sound of the bell, DC Drake and manager Damian Kane left the locker rooms and headed to the ring. Both men appeared confident, but Kane and Drake would be in for the surprise of their lives. The surprise being that the National Wrestling Federation ordered Damian Kane removed from ringside. Officers, please remove Damian Kane from the arena. Just, just think of that one. Officers, will you please remove this man from the arena? If he refuses to go, you have my permission to place him under arrest. The dog collar match, no disqualification, no Damian Kane. And anything can happen now. And it probably will, it already has. Chief Jules, cautiously, cautiously moving towards DC. You can't get away, you can't run, you can't hide. Chief Jules, with the other end of that dog collar, Strongbow working on the Mad Dog. Mad Dog in deep trouble already. Maybe it is a fact that without Damien Kane, the godfather of professional wrestling, the National Wrestling Federation heavyweight champion is not much of a champion. Well, we're going to see how he really does here. Right now, he's uh, getting the short end of it. The Chief in complete control of the match right now. Oh my goodness! The man with a chain, I guess, right there. Now, since this is a no disqualification match, anything goes, and somebody could very easily get badly hurt. The fans definitely want a change in the belt right now. There's no question about that. But uh, the 
Chief with a very stern look on his face. Continues to work on the heavyweight champ. Once again to the forehead with the chain wrapped around his fist. Continues to pound on the forehead of the Mad Dog. Hey, right now the Mad Dog is uh, himself without uh, Damien in there uh, on the side. Damien now has been cut open on his forehead. I tell you, the Mad Dog Drake is there not is looking so good. a problem here with the Mad Dog. Oh yeah, there's no question about it. There is total control for Chief Jules and now a choke with the chain with his own dog collar. Mad Dog. Chief Jules Strongbow in complete control of this match. It's in Damien, nowhere to be found. Well, he, was, he has been barred from ringside. He was just carried away by a whole bunch of security people around here. And just, uh, I'm sure he's being held under tight security somewhere in this oh building. Oh my goodness. Right now. Look at the forehead of DC. Oh. The Mad Dog has been cut and is bleeding profusely from the forehead. Deep trouble. I would, it would be safe to say at this point in time that the danger of that title being changed hands is a possibility at this point in time. I believe you're you're right so far. It seems but the like bleeding. Right now he's going back. Now to has Strongbow trying to change the tide. Yeah. How quickly. I don't know right now. The oh, look at that move. Turn. It does indeed, going back and forth. But looked like Mad Dog was out of it, but now he seemed to be coming alive again. Chief Jules now in a tough situation with the chain wrapped around his neck. And DC and yelling an something. Choke. Yep. But there are no disqualifications in this match. DC still bleeding profusely, and it's all over him, all over. What a disgusting sight. Unbelievable. Now, you know the feud between DC, oh, Mad Dog Drake, and Chief Jules Strongbow. Henry has that chain. Oh, it's an ongoing again. one that just never seems to end. Mad Dog attempting to do something else with the chain now. I'm sure he knows exactly what he wants to do. He doesn't have the guidance of Damien, and it might make a difference. He does seem a little confused in the ring right now. Right now he is like an animal. Just fighting for survival, if you will. That's what it is, yeah. You know, they're using the chains very well there. As Strombo down on the mat right now. Now going to work on Strombo's, I think the forehead is hard to tell from this camera angle, but it looks like he's working on the forehead. Blood is flowing from the National Wrestling Feder Federation Heavyweight Champion's head. The excitement is unbelievable here this afternoon. Well, I think Strombo may be cut. It was either, if, if this and his... Uh, He's opening up the forehead of the Chief yeah, looks right before way. our very eyes. The crowd trying to get the adrenaline of the Chief flowing. Drake right now doing a good job in control of the match. The crowd chanting, let's go, Chief. Right now, the Mad Dog has Walking a lot of a couple of war cries in the background. Mad Dog right now in complete control. The Chief starting to bleed now. There's a real bloody mess up in that ring, and there's got a tremendous grip on that chain. Look at this. The Chief is coming to life. Oh! Shot to the forehead again by the Chief. Right now, he's he supposed in, to have that leverage now. He's moment. in just as bad a shape, I think, as Drake was when the match turned around. Well, Drake's still in control. As he still has that leverage. He's got that chain wrapped around the forehead yet. Joel Strongbow. Chief Jules. Chief. 
both men bleeding from the forehead as a result of that chain that dog collar oh it is what an unbelievable mess up in that ring both of these they guys are really really fighting it out here today oh there these guys are so badly cut open but as you said there's no disqualification and i'm sure they both should have been at some point this probably should be stopped because of the loss of blood the fact of the matter is that somebody has to walk out of that ring and when somebody does that will be the national wrestling federation heavyweight champion the chief with blood look at the bloody mess on the chief's face mm. coming to life once again chief joel strongbow both of these men. staggering around the ring both men oh, a bloody mess continuing to pound at each other but the chief has come to life once again ladies and gentlemen now the bodies are almost covered with blood it's unbelievable look at the faces of these two wrestlers totally bloody unbelievable match Un just incredible Ladies and gentlemen, Chief Jules Strongbow now with the chains wrapped around Damian Kane. Damian Kane, Damian I did DC, it again. I know. It's all right. Well, I'll tell you Only because I'm so excited about the match. I understand. And the fact is that I just can't believe Damian Kane is not at ringside, which always seems to be a factor in any one of these matches. No question about it. It wasn't easy to get him away from ringside either, as we saw earlier. Two posts touched. Ooh. Chief Jules to number three. If he touches number four, no, number two. That's number two. Oh, well, the other one he didn't touch because it was started all over again. Right. Dick Chief Hurley. Jules making his way to post number three. Number three. If he touches one more, ladies and gentlemen, we have a new National Wrestling Federation heavyweight champion in the Chief Jules Strongbow. Dick Rowley has got three fingers. He's only three this. away. Look at this! Look, Damian, Damian Kane, Kane again! Damian Kane in a different outfit! Damian Kane is in the ring! He's stuck into the ring! He's wearing a different outfit! And the bell's rung! I don't know what's happened here! But Damian Kane is in here! I don't know why or what he's doing! What's he doing in the ring? Referee, get him out of there! Oh! Ladies and gentlemen! Again! Damien had saved the champion. However, this time Strongbow would not get a rematch. The National Wrestling Federation, fearing for the lives of both men, ordered a one-year ban on any matches between these two men. Strongbow had lost his chance for at least one year to win the belt he had come within inches of capturing twice. Next in line against Drake was Larry Beach Boy Winners. Larry had many impressive victories and had earned a shot at Drake. In the first meeting between the two, Drake again resorted to a foreign object. Larry Winters now in a little bit of pain. Damien hanging on the ropes right now. He doesn't belong there. Look at what What's he's got. Got something in his hand. What is this? Got something in his hand. The referee's nowhere in sight. That Rich Engling on the other side up. being distracted once again by Damien, and he's the master of that. Oh, my goodness. And that thing looks like it was wrapped special for this occasion. As he pounds away on the forehead. I'll tell you, my blood's boiling so much, Jack, seeing this here happen. Now, look at this on the outside of the ring. As if it isn't enough, he's taking punishment with an illegal object inside the ring. Rich, take a look at it. Come on. Look at this. Manager taking, taking up on him. Look at this. Why don't we have a disqualification here? I don't know if I can sit here much longer, Jack, and watch this. Look at this. He's bleeding now. Another shot to the forehead. 
And he's still using that illegal object. Even the fans getting a little upset here this afternoon. Larry Winters is dazed badly. He's hurt. He is really hurt. Ready to take... What is that he's got in his hand? What has he got in his hand? Turn him around. Turn him around in the back. He has it somewhere. He's hiding that object again. And once again, another master of distracting the referee and hiding things from him. Larry Winters, dead on his feet. This is why I dislike... Like you said, he's not a man, he's an animal. That's why I dislike right. this animal. Everything's illegal about him. <laughs> he is one of the most despicable wrestlers in the business. He does not deserve the title. Look at this. Why is he undoing it? Why is he undoing the turnbuckle? Look at what he did. Mad dog now. Oh, I would have pinned him, I think. But just not, not how he is. He wants to punish his opponents more. That's right. Because if the tide happens to turn, oh, now that was uncalled for. What happened to that turnbuckle on the top there? Damien took it down. I'm sure of it. He rammed his opponent's head into the turnbuckle with no pad on. <clears throat> I'm telling you, Jack, I can't stand here much longer. Hey, manager, use a pump, too! Yeah, manager, use a pump! As you see, the fans getting upset just as much as we are, actually. That's right, Jack. <clears throat> Larry Winters looks like he's coming alive. Oh, this is, gives him some of his own medicine there, Jack. Look at this. The foreign object given to him again. Once again, the godfather distracting the referee. Oh, Larry Winters is going outside to get the foreign object. He has it in his hand. All right. That's what I like to say. And the attack is on. Larry Winters is really pounding away at his forehead. Flips him off the ropes. A shot to the forehead. DC Drake is down. Here's the count. One, two, three. It's over. It's over. It's over. We have a new champion. We have a new champion. I can't believe it. I think if you don't drop that foreign object, he's going to be disqualified. I think <clears throat> the, ch the champion's stunned. He can't believe it. <clears throat> Champion! We have a new champion! We have a brand new champion! The decision of the referee is as follows. This is the what they're going out arm in arm too. I'm gonna have to look into this. Like you say, everybody here today at this the capacity this crowd saw what went down, Jack. And still, NWF heavyweight champion, DC Mad Dog Drake. Result of the confusion, a rematch was ordered. A match which would take place inside the most feared place of all, a steel cage.
Weeks before the cage match took place, another controversy raged in the ranks of the National Wrestling Federation. Drake's manager, Damian Kane, accosted a state licensed referee in a parking lot before another match. Well, no, 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 I ain't talking to you, Hick boy. Just stay out of my business. What happened in that last match with DC Drake? Every time he gets in the ring and gets the upper hand on somebody, you think you gotta stick your nose in there and no, be Kane. somebody's hero. No, Don't Kane. you tell me nothing. You just Every time you Kane, stick your nose in my business, this. you cost me a match. You cost me a match. And sooner or later, you're gonna cost me the title. And I ain't gonna put up with when it you anymore. Learn the rules. I'm talking to you. Hey. When you learn I'm the rules, it. stay out of the way. When you learn the rules, you'll get it. Come on, hey. man. Come on. Come on. Get that damn camera out of here! Get that camera out of my face! Get off of me, chump! You're gonna pay for that! You're gonna pay for that, Luke! You're gonna pay for that! Nobody sucker punches me! Nobody sucker punches me! Nobody sucker punches me! Keep your nose out of my business, chump! I'm gonna get your butt in the ring one way or the other! Keep your nose out of my business! And you, Bidman, I hope you're the referee! You got my message? Make sure you got it plain and clear! Get your hands off of me! Get that camera out of my face! NWF officials quickly barred Kane from the NWF for life. This left DC Drake without a manager. Or did it? The Steel Cage. Soon this empty arena would be filled with fans. Is there any match in wrestling as brutal or barbaric as a steel cage match? When skin hits steel, the skin tears. In the cage, DC Drake will be forced to defend the title against Larry Winners. Only one man can win. Only one man will be the NWF champion. This time, Drake is without a manager. Outside the arena, however, sits a large bus with the name DC Mad Dog Drake on the front, managed by Gunther Grimes. The mystery deepens. Who is Gunther Grimes? On the vehicle's telephone, a man who described himself as a confidant of Drake relayed instructions to an unknown figure. The man has now disappeared from the front of the bus. As our cameras ventured inside, we observed the man whispering instructions into the ear of another man who left in a hurry. This man was later identified as Gunther Grimes. When Drake emerged from the lockers, it was soon evident that he had a new manager. A manager by the name of Gentleman Gunther Grimes. What part would he play in this match? Only time would tell. A vicious slam by Larry Winters. DC Mad Dog Drake is almost out on his feet. A series of vicious big fists there by Larry Winters to the head of DC Drake, opening up that wound deeper. We know the carny tonight was going to be great. These two had had a love-hate relationship for a long, long time. And I knew I was going to see a lot of blood tonight, but this is unbelievable, this soon in the match. Big boot there by the Beach Boy. Another shot to the head, opening that wound a little bit deeper. Now Winners is trying to choke and just trying to kill DC Mad Dog Drake. Getting a major crowd approval. And Winners already made his way towards that door trying to get out of the steel cage. Winners wants to claim that championship which is rightfully his and has been denied him for so long. And Drake just janks him back, taking himself down at the same time. Where these men are getting the strength, I don't know. They're fighting on sheer instinct, sheer guts. Another big foot by Larry Winters, opening that wound a little more deeper. Big headbutt there by the Beach Boy. And the crowd roars in approval of the axes of the Larry Beach Boy winners. Big axe handle there on the head of DC Mad Dog Drake. How much longer can Drake keep going? Winners should be making his way out to the door again and getting out of steel cage and claiming that championship. Gunther Grimes is pacing this ring like a man possessed. He's never seen his champ so distraught, so lost but there's nothing he can do the steel cage is just man against steel 
Now Drake makes a comeback and slams the head of Larry Beach Bow Winners into that steel cage, slicing it open. Now both wrestlers are cut very badly. And again, Drake slams him into that steel cage. Widening the gash on Larry Beach Boy winners. And Drake starts to work on that cut on the Beach Boy. Now he grinds the head of Larry Beach Boy winners directly into that steel cage, slicing that wound ever deeper. Listen to him scream in pain. Winners is gone now. He doesn't know where he's at. Drake looking for approval from the crowd and getting none. And again, a vicious drop kick there by DC Drake. And it fails to put the Beach Boy down. But Larry's out on his feet. Another shot to the head by the dog. He doesn't want to get out. He's not worried about his title. He wants to hurt Larry Beach Boy winners. He wants to punish him. He wants to have a death in that ring tonight, ladies and gentlemen. One of these men may not leave here alive. Larry Beach Boy is trying to suck all the air he can breathe. His mouth is wide open. He's hurting. He needs air. He needs to recover. Drake's trying to get out of the cage now. And Winters gets up and gives him a low blow. Remember, there's no rules in the steel cage. Anything goes. And Drake is in pain. I'm sure Drake feels that shot. Trying to shake the cobwebs out of his head. Trying to get himself back up. But his face is just cut to ribbons. He's finally crawling towards that cage. Winners is still dazed. Neither one of these men know where they are. And Winners gets to hold that hair of the dog. And Winners is pounding on that wound, opening it ever deeper. Drake's face is just one sheet of crimson. And Drake is down. And a big leg drop by the Beach Boy. The ring moved when he did that. And again, this time a headbutt to the dog. And Larry signaling for the door to be open. And security is holding the cage back up. It's taking a pounding, but he's too And Gunther Grimes slams the door shut on Larry Winters. And Mike Mimi gets in there and opens it up. But Drake grabs a handful of hair and pounds again on those open wounds of the Beach Boy. Slingshot off the ropes by the dog. Big power slam by DC Mad Dog Drake. And Larry Winters is out of it. He has no idea where he's at. And La the dog's making his way out of the cage. He's out. The dog is out. And still NWF Heavyweight Champion. It was over. D.C. Drake, the N.W.F. champion. Bloody and beaten, Drake and Grimes headed to the safety of the locker room. As Drake and Grimes entered the dressing room area, both men were annoyed with the cameras. Okay, dog. Yeah. That microphone the away from you. Huh? Get away. Come on, man. Get out of the road. As Drake sat in the chair, trying to come to grips with what had just occurred, blood continued to flow from the head wound. Drake, wearing a cape of scarlet, was in need of medical assistance. Go to the hospital for some stitches. I think it's going to have to be stitched. Yeah. 
The doctor arrived, and a short time later, Drake was whisked to the hospital for care. In the next room, winners also received medical attention. the floor ranting and raving was it because of the injury or was it the loss of the match a short time after this was shot winners collapsed to the floor Professional wrestling continues to grow more violent by the day. Once dog collar matches, strap matches, and cage matches were the exceptions. Today they are the norm. Is it necessary to butcher an opponent to gain a victory? Why is a pinfall no longer enough to satisfy some wrestlers? With whom does the blame belong? Is it the Federation who sanctions the matches? Is it the commissions who approve the matches? Or fans who attend the slaughter? Whoever is to blame, we are certain of one thing. The blood will continue to flow, skin will continue to be ripped from bodies, and bones will continue to be crushed. How long will it be before the loser of a match is buried while the victor celebrates? It may be closer than we think.